you, Framer, for having me. Thank you, Loop Organizer, and thank you, everyone here, for coming here to pay attention. Um, little quick intro. Uh, my name is Chris Brady. I am currently a concept designer and UI artist. What does that mean? It means I'm also all of these things from time to time. Um, I mainly focus on making things for films and for games. A little mix of interactive and VR stuff kind of in there as well, but a lot of my time is spent on personal growth and on um, personal projects. Um, I'm going to show you my reel of my recent work. Can we bring the lights down and turn the volume up? Thanks. Thanks. So I originally wanted to be a uh, comic book artist and an illustrator. Um, drawing is something that I still do, uh, probably should do more of, but it's something that is my sort of my safe place. And uh, my intro to graphic design was actually making these kind of mediocre, shitty uh, demo things for, for um, raves and warehouse parties and those kind of things. Um, I spent uh, a decade, sorry about the strobe there, uh, working at interactive agencies, pitching microsites for lots of different brands. Uh, I then moved on to Facebook, uh, where I got to make things like this uh, on the communication design side, but also worked on internal tools, some product-facing things as well. And of course, I met some clever Dutchman. Uh, this is some OG framer for all you newbies. I uh, should have kept that branding maybe, but I love the new stuff, so good job. I uh, moved on to working at Oculus, um, designing for VR, uh, both on product side and on the brand side, and then I moved on to the work that I do now, which is mostly sort of fictional user interface stuff. This is from Black Panther. Really, it's like a mix of graphic design with heavy emphasis on motion graphics and, and 3D work. Um, so, I think having taken all these different paths, uh, I'm going to talk to you a bit about uh, reinvention or starting over. I think there's this sort of wonderful inherent vulnerability to starting over. Uh, there's this moment of weakness where you're forced to grow. And um, it can be painful and it can be rewarding. Um, but this idea, I think, was born out of uh, a constant sort of need to feed my own curiosity. But if I look at it a little bit closer, it was really from a feeling of unhappiness or feeling incomplete. And so my way out of that sort of dark place a little bit was to just make things and to let everything else follow. Rather than standing here and talk about all the things that I've been somewhat successful at, uh, I kind of want to talk a bit about the things that I struggle with. Um, I wrestle with ego, uh, comparison, jealousy. Uh, I'm insecure. Uh, I constantly second guess myself and feel outmatched in most places that I work. Um, I do welcome that into my life, though, by shifting my focus and changing my creative path. Um, and it's allowed me to learn as I go and it ends up being sort of this moment of having a lot of sweaty palms and some sleepless nights, kind of like now. Um, most, though, if not all my commercial work these days comes from a client seeing personal work that I do, 
which in turn gives me more time and more money to do personal work, um, which sounds great, but it also means sacrificing a lot of time and a lot of energy to do so. As I'm sharing these kind of personal things with you today, uh, please stop me if it gets too self-helpy. Feel free to lob some free snacks or boo or hiss in Dutch. I'm sure it's a very friendly boo or hiss. Um, or maybe toss some used tulips at me or whatever it is that you guys do here. Um, but hopefully I won't bore you for the next 20 minutes. I'm originally from Norway. This is a pretty accurate representation of what day-to-day <laughs> -day events in Norway is like. Having just this great time. Uh, this is actually a bit more of what it was like. This is me in the third or fourth grade, uh, about to present something to my classmates. Uh, just look at how proud I am. Well, I'm wearing all black too, I may add. Um, I, I show you this picture because the moment that it represents really is sort of why I make art in the first place, because there's literally zero fear here. Um, Look at those shoulders, right? Look at that face. There's like no, no hesitation there. Um, and um, honestly, that's that moment where I'm trying to get back to when I, when I make things and when I share things with, with the world. And really, it's this thing about using my imagination, creating something, and sharing it with others. And that's, that's the thing that sort of validates me, I think. <laughs> and... Making that art has always been my window into a sense of belonging, into a sense of community. And that need to be loved drives that need to make art. And I think in turn, I do my best work when this is the driving force. So it is work, right? Uh, I love this quote, I don't like work, no man does, but I like what is in the work. The chance to find yourself, your own reality, for yourself, not for others, what no other man can ever know. They can only see the mere show and never can tell what it really means. Well, um, I think getting lost in that reality is something that I really identify strongly with. Um, I think it's maybe a bit cliche to drone on about process um, at this point, but I think that path of exploration really is uh, one of my favorite things about being a creative person. I think we'd all love to say that Creative process is a linear experience like this. It would make things so much easier, right? But really, in reality, it's a lot more like this, which is fine. Um, but I've had to develop some tools and some sort of methods in order to get some shit done. And a lot of times, it's, it's, it's about this. It's about sitting down and simply getting to work. Uh, I think accountability and discipline both go a long way. Uh, but it still takes time to establish those coping mechanisms. And one of those methods that I have found is to give myself a roadmap uh, by building a framework around a story. And by having this narrative path, I then give myself a scenario that enables me to discover, to learn, and uh, make new things, ultimately. And really, Storytelling is good design, right? Um, it's this wonderful connection point to other people. And through that narrative, we all have this shared emotional experience that we get to enjoy together. Uh, that is one thing that drew me to um, film in general, just because I get to participate in a larger story. Uh, and through each little vignette that I make, um, whether it's front and center as a story beat or more subtly in the background as atmosphere, which is still um, adding to the uh, overall tone. So it's still helping me sort of take part in the story. And for me, this satisfies both the emotional attachment to the work as well as the one, the side of me that enjoys the problem solving. <clears throat> All right, so 2014 or so, I decided to quit my job and um, pursue something new. I was a bit uh, unhappy, perhaps, but I, my creative output had gone from, or basically gone to zero. Uh, and so I wanted a challenge. And uh, through that sort of challenge, I decided to create a short film. Um, 
I thought of a concept of a, uh, uh, an interdimensional primate who is searching space for psychotropic plants for spiritual guidance. Uh, don't ask me how I came up with that. We can talk about that later at the after party. Uh, <laughs> But uh, what it turned into really was this massive learning experience, uh, and it, it pushed my career in a totally new direction. Really, everything starts on paper. In this case, storyboards help me sort of figure out the pacing, where to focus my efforts. If I'm world building, I need to sort of not build everything, just the things that the audience will eventually see. But sketching ideas gives me that freedom to make mistakes, get the idea out of my head, sort of, just make it real, make it less threatening um, before I move on to you know, some more fidelity, something like this. Um, some 3D stuff, just moving through production, graphical work. And honestly, I don't want to spend a whole bunch of time on this project because it really is a bit of an older piece. But the reason I bring it up is because essentially, in the end, it was a huge failure. And I never finished the short film. Um, I didn't understand a lot of the process. There was a lot of skill sets that I was lacking at the time. And I ran out of time and energy and money and all these things, right? Um, but just so I could have a little bit of that love, a little bit of that feedback, at the very, very end of the project, I cut together this little motion reel of UI stuff that I had really never done before in this way um, and put that out. And I got this pretty um, incredible response, which kind of made me rethink my approach and maybe thinking about doing more of this kind of work. Um, again, it's not a straight path, starting in one place and just trusting in the things that I enjoy doing. So. Work is starting to come in, uh, and I'm pursuing more personal stuff again. Uh, again, creating short narrative. In this case, I wanted to kind of give myself a challenge where uh, I was recording the process as I was creating the work. Um, not only for my own benefit, but I really wanted to be a bit more transparent about my process. I just kind of share that part rather than it being this like mystery final product that I kind of see a lot. Um, and so really, uh, I'm not going to show this whole thing, probably run out of time, but really in the end, I ended up with these frames um, of these sort of outer space reconnaissance drone images uh, where I created everything from scratch. I did all the landscape stuff in ZBrush, uh, painted a lot of this in Photoshop, made a lot of other things in, in 3D, in Cinema 4. And really, again, finding my style, giving myself an excuse to make more UI stuff, essentially, uh, and being more comfortable with the UI work at this point, and, and really finding my own style and, uh, and vision for this kind of stuff. So again, because of this work, uh, I was invited to work on a movie called What Happened to Monday. Um, it might be on Netflix Europe, I'm not sure. But um, it was a huge project. Uh, I was essentially the only designer making UI for this thing. And uh, I had no idea what I was doing, so of course I said yes. Um, there was just a ton of tech in this film. Uh, command console, screens, bracelets, tablets, mirrors, all the kind of like essential dystopian sci-fi stuff you know you need. Um, project lasted well over a year, right up to the uh, very uh, tippy top of my wedding. Uh, and I'm surprised my wife even recognized me when I stepped up to the threshold because we had barely seen each other for the previous four or five months. Um, thankfully, she's very understanding. <laughs> Again, uh, trusting in the things that I knew how to do, building myself a backstory, sort of understand how all the elements fit together. 
starting on paper. I really don't go any further than this when I start generating ideas before I move into things like this, um, just higher fidelity things. And, and really, this is where I um, just have a lot of fun and stay up till 3 or 4 in the morning, um, getting lost in detail and um, essentially trusting in that process that I've sort of built up along the way. I do, from time to time, uh, lean on some of the interaction principles that I've learned from building real things in the past. Some of the UI stuff that I do does sort of slowly, uh, I don't know, you know, there's a, there's a point where uh, you need to sort of use a little bit of reality and uh, um, allow your designs to not simply entertain, but also give yourself a little bit of real world uh, feeling, but not sacrificing style. Um, you know, it's still entertainment. This is uh, interactive mirror. This is really early, early stuff. A lot of times I'll build these kind of boot screens. Just give the director an idea of how much stuff is on the screen, how it feels. And really, this was pared down incredibly from this. I usually, you know, start with a lot and hack, hack away at it. And then, you know, kind of early, early plate, a shot, essentially, just kind of slapping it on top and uh, figuring out how things feel. Eventually, this will be tracked. And, and really, a lot of that work is just sort of, it just disappears. But it helps along the way. Um, and it's fun. So I feel like I have a lot more time than I thought, but some closing thoughts. Uh, comparison and jealousy, I think, can be defeating and demoralizing. Um, I, I definitely struggle with my ego picking away at other people's success, as if to say that my success is somehow less important. Uh, I found that looking to idols and having people that inspire you, I think it's incredibly important. But it can be closely linked with sort of this feeling of fear or falling behind, feeling incomplete. And especially when you're starting over or in a vulnerable place where you're pursuing something new, this can be the case. But try to stay on your path, and it's yours to own. And again, there's a wonderful vulnerability that happens when you are pursuing something new. Um, you are forced to grow. And I think for all of us following this creative path somewhere along the way, no matter how comfortable you may be, there is a need to call your own bluffs and pursue a new and intimidating path. Um, I think in turn it will inform perhaps an internal recognition of self. And if this is then the driving force behind your output, then the work will be better for it. It's sometimes been confusing in the past, you know, constantly making things for others rather than ourselves. To know when or how to question whether we are following that initial spark that got us started. It takes a while. At least it did for me to start asking those questions along the way. Thank you.